Lesson 16.2b, using mean absolute deviation, we're going to be using the MAD. As we learned in the last video, 16.2a, the mean absolute deviation is also called the MAD. And the first thing we do is we find the mean of the entire data set. Then we find the distances of each data value, each number in the set, to that mean we just found. Then we find the mean of those distances as the MAD. It's very important for you to understand how to find a mean or an average in order to find a MAD. If we have these three data values in a set, we get their sum. 2 plus 4 plus 6 is 12. There's three data values. We divide it by that 3. And we know that the mean or average is 4. The mean absolute deviation can be used to answer statistical questions in the real world. Many of these questions may have implications, that means suggestions, for the operation of various businesses. A gardener wants to grow Roma tomatoes that are close to the same weight when ripe. He's trying two types of seed to see which brand produces the best results. In one plot, he used brand A seed, and in another plot, he used brand B seed. And the gardener records the weights of the tomatoes in each plot in the tables below. Which seed produces less variability in weight? That means which brand seed had the tomatoes, when ripe, all about the same weight? So the first thing we do, using his recorded data, we find the mean weights of the tomatoes in each plot. We, we're going to add all of these data values and get an average, a mean. Then we're going to add all of these data values and get an average, or mean. So we write all of the values as add-ins. We add them up and we get 29. And because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 values, it's going to be divided by 8. And we get a decimal 3 and 625 thousandths. And it's telling us to round our answers to the nearest tenth. This 2 tells the 6 to stay the same. So we're going to have 3 and 6 tenths. And we're going to use an approximation symbol because we took off the 2 and the 5. So it's approximately 3 and 6 tenths. We do the same thing for brand B to find its mean, its average. We add all of the digits. We get 32 and 9 tenths. There's 8 data values in the table. So we're going to divide it by 8. And we get 4.1125. This 1 tells that 1 to stay the same, so it's going to be approximately 4 and 1 tenth. So the mean for brand A is about 3 and 6 tenths, and the mean for brand B is about 4 and 1 tenth. But we're not done. The second step is we find the distance from each weight to the mean. We had a weight of 4 and 5 tenths, and the mean was about 3 and 6 tenths. We subtract and get 7 tenths. We find the distance between 2 and 1 tenth and 3 and 6 tenths. We subtract and get 1 and 5 tenths. And we do it for each of the values. We find out how far away these values are from this mean. And we write them in the table as the distance from the mean. We do the same thing for brand B. What we're doing is we have a mean of about 4.1, so we subtract 3.8 and we get 3 tenths. And 4.6 minus 4.1 is 5 tenths, and 4 and 1 tenth minus 4 and 1 tenth is a 0. And this is important. We need to keep this 0 here because it is one of the 8. We need to divide by 8. If we didn't count that 0, we'd be dividing by 7, and we'd get a different answer. We do have a 0 here as a placeholder. We do it for each of these data values and find the distance from the mean, and we mark them into the table. Now that we have the distances from the mean written to our table, we can calculate the mean absolute deviation, the MAD, for the tomatoes in each plot. We're going to round to the nearest tenth. So for brand A, these were all the distances from the mean. And we add them and get 6 and 8 tenths. We know there were 8 of them. So we're going to divide that by 8, and we're going to get 85 hundredths. But it wants us to round it to the nearest tenth. 
So this 5 is going to tell the 8 to go up to 9, so we have about 9 tenths of an ounce. For brand B, we add all the distances from the mean, and we get 2 and 1 tenth. We counted that 0 because we need to divide by 8. If we didn't count that 0, we'd be dividing by 7. We need to divide it by 8. And 2 and 1 tenth divided by 8 is 0.2625. This 6 is going to tell the 2 to round up to a 3. So we have about 3 tenths of an ounce. So we can see this is about 9 tenths of an ounce, and this is 3 tenths of an ounce. So since brand B's MAD is less, it's only 3 tenths of an ounce, brand B seed produces less variability of the tomato weights. This is saying they differ in weight about 3 tenths of an ounce, where these differ in weight about 9 tenths of an ounce. So these tomatoes are almost all the same weight when they're ripe. So if the gardener wants to grow tomatoes that are about the same weight when they're ripe, he should go with brand B. Okay, now we've finished the second part of the lesson. We're going to move on to the last part using a spreadsheet to find MAD, the mean absolute deviation. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.